On the show today, softball legend Dot Richardson stops by the studio to talk about her team's conference regular season title and the expectations for the postseason. Plus, he's known among Liberty athletes for driving a bus, but he's known across the world for something far different. That story much more on this edition of Game On. Welcome into Game On, your home for all things Liberty Athletics, as well as stories of faith in sports. And we have a great show oh, sure. lined up for you here today. We sure do. As always, he's Matt Warner. I'm Rhett McGibbon. And today, maybe a first on the show, is we're going to lead off with some lacrosse. How about that? The Lady Flames finished the regular season with a 4-3 and three conference record, which would set them up for a first-round matchup against Longwood. The Flames would enter action as the four seed and would have a dominant effort against number five, Longwood. With just under 15 minutes left in the first half, and the Lancers within two, the Flames would go on a 4-0 run. Foster would score twice, followed by Brown and Britton. Britton's goal would be her 22nd of the year and would give Liberty a 9-3 lead with just under eight minutes left. The Flames would go on to control the rest of this game. Foster and McCaffrey would both set a career high with five goals apiece, while Big South Freshman of the Year Carly White would record a four-goal game. Flames would take the match by a final of 20 to 13, moving on to the next round. Congrats to them. Well, when softball legend Dot Richardson took over Liberty's program before the 2014 season, you knew it was only a matter of time before she turned the Lady Flames into a force to be reckoned with. And it appears that that time might just be right now. Liberty finished the regular season with a 35 and 20 record and an even more impressive 16 and 5 mark in Big South play. That was good enough to win the conference's regular season crown for the first time since 2007. They had the top batting average in the league, the most runs scored, and the second best ERA this season. And they hope all that will lead to success in next week's Big South Championship. With more on the season thus far and a look ahead to the tourney, Brett is standing by with Dot Richardson. Thank you, Matt. Coach, thanks for coming in the studio today. Thanks for having me here. I'm excited. Everybody talks about, you know, the young basketball team and, and whatnot, but your team is really young as well. 17 underclassmen. How have they progressed over the, the course of the year? Well, very pleased with their progression, and you can see it in not just the win and loss columns, mm -hmm. but just in the advancement of both sides of the ball right. on offense and defense. Um, but I think it really comes seeing a lot of heart and growth as a competitor and uh, I always call it the heart of a champion. And the future of Liberty softball looks really bright. When you have a pair of sisters like the Bishop Twins in there and their bats have been phenomenal for you this year, what does it do for the rest of the lineup confidence wise and do, have you seen a reaction from the rest of your girls? Without a doubt, the Bishop Twins has added that dimension where other players look and say, that's what I need to do. And what do they do? They have a lot of God-given talent. Every player on our team does. but. Uh, what they do is no, they know it takes a lot of hard work. And sometimes we think what's hard work is not really the type of hard work needed to take you to the next level. And the Bishop Twins do that. You will find them all the time in the batting cages or hitting each other ground balls or fly balls and challenging each other. And that healthy competition is what is needed in a team, not just in a family. Um, and so it has made our team more of a family as well as they, everyone is really taking it to the next level because of the example that the Twins are giving. Everybody loves talking about run scoring, but your pitching this year has been great. You went six games, all shutouts. Yeah. What has that group done so well this year? Why has it clicked? Well, it makes it easy, obviously, in the circle when they're doing their job. And I think what it makes it click is they all are a, a unit. You know, it's, you know, you see that in baseball a right. lot. You know, you got a lot of the guys way out there yeah. in the outfield. <laughs> and, you know, we don't do that in softball as much. But... It takes, when you have five pitchers, it really takes them believing in each other and realizing that they each have a role, whether they're pitching or not or in the bullpen or not. Uh, so I think that that has made a difference in our pitching staff. It's not about me. You know, it's really about them, each other. And when you have that selflessness on a team, a lot of great things can happen. We look at the end of the regular season, you lose the series to Longwood, but secretly as a coach, is that something you can spin to a positive because you know the girls are motivated to work hard heading up to Big South tournament play? Absolutely. I think the one of the worst things for a team, particularly a team with talent mm -hmm. and everything going your way, is to get complacent. And the Longwood series, it kind of woke us up a little bit, say, you know, we need to we need to work hard and not take things for granted. Uh, that's that is the enemy, if you would, of yeah. the mindset 
of somebody who's like, oh, we can just throw our gloves on the field and win. And it doesn't matter how I throw this pitch. They're not going to hit it. Oh, no, you got to show up. And uh, we need to compete. And uh, we're doing that. When you go into the Big South tournament coming up, what is the secret for success for your group? The secret is, uh, number one, recognizing the gifts that God has given us and to seize the opportunity before us. Number one seed, three wins in a row. That's what it's going to take. But to take not just the usual, you know, one game or one pitch at a time, but realizing that trust, trust the gifts that you've been given. Trust that you're prepared. My mom always said, she who fails to prepare, prepares to fail. So I tell the kids, what's the secret? Prepare. And we are prepared and we're getting even more prepared. Uh, but when the excitement happens, it should drive that feeling of just enjoyment and enthusiasm and determination. I always love the saying, be one with the ball. Nothing else exists but the ball. And when you're able to do that, there is nothing like it. And everything else takes care of itself. Well, Coach, always great to talk to you. Thanks for coming in. Thanks so much. Yeah. Love it. Matt, Appreciate it. Over to you. Thank you, Red. Turning to baseball now, the Flames offense stayed red hot this past week. In their three-game sweep of Longwood, Liberty combined for 39 runs. Then they gave number 10 Virginia all they wanted on Tuesday night before eventually falling in walk-off style to the Wahoos 8-7. Now heading into the weekend, the Flames' 12 conference wins are tops in the Big South, and they easily lead the conference in runs scored and ERA. So they're in a great spot as we head down the home stretch of the season. Well, every person has their own unique life story, and that's one of the goals of this show, to share some of these incredible life stories with you. But some stories aren't obvious at first glance. You have to look hard for them, or listen hard, in the case of George Miklas. For any athlete, you know them as Bussy. And if you think about it, it's funny how much trust you put into Bussy as they drive you overnight to distant lands as you sleep, when really you know absolutely nothing about them. Just like any athlete or coach, when you scratch the surface, there is a story there, just as there is with Liberty bus driver George Miklas. I started driving motor coach in April of 1995 for a small company with seven buses in Sharpsville, Pennsylvania. Having a bus driver like George, we get to see him more, uh, more than once, and it gets to the point where we get to know him and he starts to become part of the team and uh, just has the right things to say to us as we get on or off the bus. And while George is driven for other colleges, athletic programs, he enjoys the freedom he has found in Central Virginia. At Liberty University, if I have an opportunity to pray with a student, I'm allowed to. I can give my testimony. To me, that's what I get out of driving motor coach. I get to see and do many things. Thank you. You're welcome. See you in a little bit. Thanks, sir. Well, I think I'll play a little bit of harmonica. Let's see here. One thing I bet you didn't know about George is he is one of the best harmonica players in the whole world. And it all started when his dad wanted him to earn some change for the arcade. Here's my hat and here's my harmonica. Walk around to the other campers and see if you can get some change in the hat. And that's where it started. Over the years, George would excel to the point in which he would be approached by a famous harmonica group. I was recruited to join Jerry Murad's Harmonicats. In 1947, Jerry Murad's Harmonicats was a harmonica trio that had a hit record. Many hit records after the very first in 1947. Without getting to know George, I would have never realized that he was a world-class harmonica player. His time with the Harmonic Cats would open many doors for George. He would play in Korea, Germany, and in front of more than 18,000 people in St. Louis. He would even be asked to endorse Honer's world-class harmonica. However, these are not his greatest accomplishments. My family has come to play harmonicas with me. And it's been a great thing that we can do together. 
One of the things that we love to do is to play special music in our church. We've put a program together that we travel to churches outside of our local area and present gospel harmonica concerts. My father played the harmonica, I play the harmonica, my children play the harmonica. It, uh, it binds us together. So next time you step onto the bus, say hello to the person behind the wheel. You never know what you may discover. Ah, play that sweet music, George. <laughs> you know, I love the story. Here's a guy, world-class musician, yeah. and he's such a servant to the athletes sure. here at Liberty, driving them around to their games, and not a guy that boasts in all of his skills no. and talents. A lot of the guys didn't even know until That's they got right. to know him for a while, and there you see uh, just a world-class talent and a great servant as well. Yeah, he wants to continue to serve by writing a book, which is directed towards high school musicians and yeah. teachers. So it just displays how important the harmonica is in your education throughout the whole gamut, yeah. so it's pretty cool Great to talent, see, no yeah, for sure. Well, if you're familiar with the show, then you're aware of the fact that Liberty boasts one of the top club sports programs in the nation. That's right. Well, this past week, their athletes were recognized in their annual club sports banquet. Carrie Jickling, the captain of the women's D1 hockey team, would be awarded Female Athlete of the Year. Jickling has led her team to three straight national championship final appearances. Josh Ferenzi would be honored as Male Athlete of the Year, winning a national championship in wrestling. And we all remember the proposal afterwards yeah. as well. Coach of the Year honors would go to women's ultimate Frisbee coach, Jonathan Mass. His team would have a 5-2 record, placing second in the Colonial Conference. And finally, my hockey team, the D3 Flames, was nominated for the Breakthrough Award. Congrats. However, we didn't win. I'm sorry. The women's DT, D2 team, who had a splendid year, sure received the honors. Well, coming up, she's taking her game down under. We check in with one of Liberty Women's Basketball all-time greats. And one former LU soccer player is using the game to minister to kids in her own backyard. That's all when Game On returns. I'm on my way heading out across the bay. You know, conventional advertising says we should start with an arbitrary quote from a historic figure. It should make us sound nostalgic and wise. showing where I long to be. Outward bound, I travel on through rain or shine. Now we're supposed to cut to some slow motion footage of beautiful students to complete the package. Are you ready to apply now? Wait, scrap that. Listen, we're all tired of forced authenticity, and we don't want to waste your time with contrived quotes and stock footage. Let's try something different. You see, we believe in the challenge of a valuable education, the kind that keeps you well into the night as you search for the stars, the kind that prepares you for your dream job of changing the world. We love our beautiful campus where diversity can be seen in the color of our skin and the service we engage in. We paint up, rise up, and stand up for truth. On fourth and one, oh, you better believe we're going for it because there's a fire in our hearts, a fire that burns for a better world. Like those who came before us, we're ready to roll up our sleeves and dig in. We have faith hope and love, so we become good fathers and mothers, co-workers and civil leaders, innovators, trailblazers, those who spark a revolution. We believe in training students how to remain true to their faith when the going gets tough, when those around you seem to rise against you. So if you're still watching, thank you. Let's build a better world for Christ. Liberty University, training champions for Christ since 1971. Hi, I'm Anita, and I'm graduating with a degree in business administration and a minor in psychology. I love Liberty Online because of its flexibility. I can spend time with my family and, you know, go back to the schoolwork later, even if it's at midnight. You know, I can be at home, do my schoolwork in my pajamas. And it's worked out perfect, absolutely perfect. I've been able to help take care of my three-year-old grandson while his parents work. So that's just been awesome. I didn't take classes for 20 years. So I was on unemployment and applying for jobs. I had the experience 
but I didn't have the degree that was usually required. Coming back as an older, more mature, wiser person, I did much better. You can do it. Don't underestimate yourself. I totally was underestimating myself, but I am smarter than I thought. <laughs> I am especially excited to graduate because I will be graduating with my daughter. And I can't wait to see what God has in store for my life. Hey there, welcome back to Game On. You know, it would be an understatement to say that during her time at Liberty, Ashley Reininger was anything less than dominant. The 6'4 forward finished her tenure with the Flames ranked 7th all-time in points, as well as 4th in rebounds, block shots, double-doubles, and field goal percentage. Now Ashley is taking her talents down under as a part of the Bendigo Lady Braves in the Southeast Australian Basketball League. You may not know that Ashley had to overcome multiple operations last year just to get back into playing shape. Earlier this week, we caught up with Ashley via Skype to find out more about her basketball journey after Liberty. After my last Liberty game, I had a second knee surgery. Um, then they also kind of had looked into um, a hip injury that I had as well. So I had surgery a few months later for that. Um, ended up not being able to run or jump for six months and um, wasn't able to play basketball again for eight months. Thankfully, I was still in the Lynchburg area, so the coaches were great. They were so willing to work with me and help me out in any way that they could. So during the entire process, I'd kind of um, forced myself to say, okay, like this is enough, like I need to stop. Um, but the entire time, I just couldn't let it go. It was kind of this sense of, um, I'm not done yet. And I, I don't know why, um, but I just had this feeling. Um, I just, I knew that there was something more. I knew that I had to at least try. I literally got a call. On Wednesday morning, a friend of a friend had mentioned that I was interested in playing, and they had talked to a coach in Australia who was in need of a post player. Um, so I, I called the, the coach in Australia later that day and talked on the phone with him. He sent me a contract that evening. I turned in the signed contract the following Monday and flew out the following Sunday. So it was a two process of moving my life out of an apartment that I lived in for three years and uh, moving to Australia. So. It's been absolutely incredible. Um, it is different, um, but I mean, it's still it's still basketball. Um, I'd say probably the biggest difference is the tempo. Um, the shot clock is only 24 seconds, and off of an offensive rebound, it sets to 14. So it's just a, a much faster a pace. After this entire last year, um, and just the coaches that have come behind me with all of that, um, just taking each um, I don't know, each instant as it comes. I'm going to make the most of what I have right now, what's in front of me currently, um, and then at the end of the day, not relying on myself because um, I could get injured and I could end up not being able to play basketball again. But at the end of the day, um, um, I know that I'm here for a reason as of now, and I'm just going to take advantage of the opportunity while I have it. Exciting to see Ashley having continued success. Well, when you think of missions, your first thought might be about someone serving in the jungles of Africa or in an orphanage in South America. But do you think about your own backyard? Kendall Alvey did. Now she's using her love of soccer to share the love of Christ with kids right here in Virginia. You can go almost anywhere in the world and toss a soccer ball down on the street and, and people are gonna be interested. You know, you don't have to speak the same language or be from the same culture to enjoy a game like soccer. Good job, good job. Kendall Alvey loves the game of soccer. During her college years, the Liberty women's soccer team became the perfect outlet for her to show her faith and love of the sport. When I was on the field, I just kind of came alive. Between the lines was a safe place for me to be, and um, I just began to sense that the things that God had gifted me with were, were for more than just trophies and, and personal glory and recognition. Soon Kendall would have an opportunity to go overseas and serve through a sports outreach program in Uganda. My husband and I went over to serve long term in Uganda. While we were over there we began to realize that it was only for a time and that that was more of a training ground for us. And that's when it started to kind of click with me that I didn't need to, to go anywhere else um, to, to serve the way that a missionary served. She decided to use her experience to bring healing and hope to the people of her own neighborhood. We just started with what we knew, 
And what we knew was soccer camps and what we knew was soccer clubs. And so uh, we borrowed some equipment from a local rec department and we got a bunch of volunteers from the local colleges and churches and we just did camps. And that was basically how it started, um, just with borrowed equipment and volunteers. Here, Lane, switch me balls. That one's flat, bud. There you go. Sports outreach began to grow, and Kendall needed some help. She looked back to a familiar place and found help in Liberty Women's Soccer team manager, Katie Douglas. Katie's one of our interns. Um, she's passionate about soccer. She's passionate about being part of a team, being involved. She's a hard worker. We get Katie to, to tell others about the things that she's passionate about. Once I got involved and truly saw, saw the heart of the ministry, that was the coolest part. It's not about the work with her, it's more about building the relationship and she's constantly pouring into me like, hey, how are you doing? Making sure I'm growing in my faith. But just to see that authenticity and the relationships that are built through that. And I think once I get one person to come out, just even on a Saturday to play soccer with kids, they see just the true relationship building and how much you can pour into these kids. And I think people just fall in love and that's what happened to me. We've been blessed by the kids at club who uh, who just every week are eager to learn and to come and not just learn soccer or basketball, but to learn about scripture and to learn about the gospel and to see these coaches who are, who are servant leaders really serving their community and really trying to show these kids how to be missionaries to their community as well. Train, equip, and deploy is, is what we say. We want them to be well trained and equipped for what they're going to do. So we want them to walk away not only having a gospel foundation, but we want them to walk away knowing that they've also been gifted and they can also serve God with what they've been given. We trust that God's going to do the work. He's going to be the one who restores hope and transforms life, not us. As God wants us to grow, we feel very good about the fact that we know that He'll lead the way and He'll cause the growth. And so right now, we're just working hard to, to continue to build on what we have. Our thanks to Erica Wolfuck for producing that piece. And if you would like to learn more about sports outreach, be a volunteer, perhaps donate to the ministry, you can find more information at sportsoutreach.net. Well, time now for Warm Hot and Fuego. Yeah. Rhett McGibbon stepping up to the old table here. Oh, yeah. Top three athletic performances in Liberty over the past week. Mm -hmm. We're running out of time as the spring season yeah, comes to a close. Uh, sad moment. I was we'll, thinking about that we'll today. We'll dwell on that later. Yeah. We'll hide our emotions till after the show. Let's begin with your pick for warm this week. Who you got? Yeah, we're going to go to the track here. The women's 4x400, okay. 4 1,600 meters of pure glory okay. for this team. Tanner Elam, Mary Whitner, Nicole Leonzo, and Olivia Bamer of course. set a program record with their time of 3 minutes, 40.32 seconds. And that record had been standing since 2007. Wow. So this is not like yeah. something, you know, sometimes you see this isn't some Johnny come lately yeah, record. This exactly. is the real deal. They did this in front of a crowd of 48,000 people at the ECAC. So they were, you know, if the nerves were there, they didn't show it. And for Whitmer and Leonzo, they were yeah. in their home state. And oh, Leonzo, in the third yeah. leg, threw on the Jets 53.5 wow. seconds. It just took her to get around that track. She was rolling. Yeah, a little home cooking always yeah. helps, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, well, congrats to them. Yeah. Moving on now from warm, your choice for hot. Yeah, we go to women's lacrosse. Carly White, and she has been... Hot. Yes. Ah, yeah, see, well I'm done. trying to figure you out yes. after all this time. This young lady had four goals in their semifinal match over Longwood. Also named Big South Freshman of the Year. Wow. And you know, you got Kayla Foster sure. and whatnot on this team. Yeah, they talent. do such a great job. She kind of came in third. She had oh, 25 goals, 18 assists, had a great year. So yeah. she kind of had that. It's nice when you're a freshman, you come in, you got a couple horses already yeah. there in the stall, and you can kind of do your carry thing. carry the load. Yeah, and she did a fantastic job of providing secondary scoring for this group. Had a great year. And you think about the future yeah. of this team. It's just they've got three really prominent goal scorers coming back, which is great to see. So I expect big things out of them next year. Certainly, and we yeah. expect big things from you right now yeah. with your pick for In Fuego. In Fuego this week, yes. highest honor that we can, we can give. bestow on anyone is who? Softball, Autumn Bishop. Mm. And I think when opposing coaches look at the Liberty Flames lineup and yeah. they see Bishop Bishop, they're like disgusting. Because no. it just <laughs> it makes them, they hate it. Yeah, yeah. Third Big South Freshman of the Week honor for her this year. She's just, she went through injuries. Yeah. And then she comes out of those injuries and she still is tops and Top 10 in multiple categories in the Big South. She yeah. hasn't missed a beat. She went two for three in that first game against Longwood. A big reason why they did, you know, they were close in that game. So the Bishop sisters have been absolutely fantastic. And Autumn coming off injury, right back at it, swinging hard. I think if anything, they say maybe she's trying too hard. So just, yeah. just swing away. Just have swing fun. away. Can't yeah. wait to see how they do in the Big yeah. South tournament. For One sure. other team to note mm -hmm. right now. They didn't make the list, I understand. But... 
the golf team here at Liberty, yes. making the NCAA regionals right. as an at-large bid. So congrats to them as well. Absolutely. All right, well, more game on coming up after this. Don't go anywhere. Marty Mitchens. I'm a master firefighter with the Lynchburg Fire Department. I started out with residential coursework at Liberty back in 2000, and I've also been a member of the Coast Guard Reserve since then. I completed a substantial amount of my general education requirements, and then 9-11 happened. And after spending time on active duty, I never went back to school. Liberty Online gave me the opportunity to easily get a bachelor's degree that was equivalent to my field of work. That has actually opened up opportunities for promotional processes in the public safety realm and also in the military in the future. Liberty Online has been really flexible with my schedule, having a family and having a full-time career with the Lynchburg Fire Department. I'm currently enrolled in the Master of Arts in the Executive Leadership Program. Liberty Online worked great with me to be able to transition from completing a bachelor's and turning right back around and getting into a master's program, which is something that I never thought that I would even consider. This is Liberty University, the world's largest Christian university. Want to come visit us? Well, you're in luck. Homecoming is a perfect opportunity for alumni, families, and newcomers to participate in the game day experience. At College for a Weekend, you get to hear from speakers, go to classes, and attend our weekend concert. Ring in the new year with us at Winterfest. Spend the day snowboarding at Snowflex, rock climbing, or at the artist Q&A, then rock out at night with the top Christian artists. With so many ways to visit our campus, why aren't you here already? Have you ever decided what you're going to do this summer? Maybe number four. <laughs> the Trans Am? That's awesome, man. You're going to run across America. Do you have any idea what you put us through every time you do one of these things? I feel like God wants me to do this, to inspire people one last time. Can I expect when I get back? I don't know. Hey there, welcome back to Game On. Sad to say, but our time is up for mm. today. So if you want to check out some more of what I call Game On Beauties, yeah. our great pieces, go to our website, GameOnLU. He's the only one that calls them that, by yeah. the way. You can also <laughs> find us on social media, at GameOnLU. Look us up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, the whole team. Well, he's Rem McGibbon, I'm Matt Warner. Thank you so much for watching the show. We plan on seeing you right back here next week.